For decades, we thought of dinosaurs as scaly, cold-blooded, tail-dragging beasts, similar to lizards. Even into the days of Jurassic Park, when dinosaurs like Velociraptor were portrayed as more nimble animals, they remained scaly and reptilian in appearance. Since the 1960s, however, the theory that dinosaurs and modern-day birds were closely related was heavily discussed, and among the numerous ideas that spread about in the scientific community at the time, one of them was, for its time somewhat radical, did dinosaurs possess feathers? The answer to this question would not come from North America, or Europe, where dinosaurs were best known at the time, but from China. In a fossil site known as the Yixian Formation, a vast ecosystem existed during the early Cretaceous, inhabited by dinosaurs that were absolutely groundbreaking in the history of both paleontology and science as a whole. From this site, our image of dinosaurs was forever changed and would spearhead the golden age of dinosaur paleontology. What kind of a world did these dinosaurs live in? What were the purposes of their feathered coats? And most importantly of all, what have we learned from these discoveries? These questions, and many others, will be answered as we explore the wild and amazing world of the feathered lords of China here on Dinosaurs Unleashed. Midwinter. Freezing temperatures, killer storms, and scarcity of food make this a harsh place to make a living. Not everyone lives through every day to see another. But where there is a will, there is a way. And dinosaurs do in fact live here, if you know what to look for. This is a subadult U. Tyrannus. In spite of the cold, the prospect of food draws him in. At 9 meters long, U. Tyrannus is a large Tyrannosauroid, and the largest feathered dinosaur known to science. 
Discovered in 2012, this strange theropod is incredibly important, as it demonstrates that dinosaurs didn't have to be small to be feathered. And apex predator, Yu Tyrannus was the undisputed king of early Cretaceous China, its only competition being others of its kind. As the storm intensifies, the theropod decides to leave the carcass, abandoning it to the elements. So why exactly did Yu Tyrannus need feathers? Needless to say, large dinosaurs don't necessarily require feathers, as their larger size is usually enough to warm them up. But in these harsh winters, even dinosaurs like Yu Tyrannus wouldn't survive with just scales for skin. So feathers, at least in this case, are used to add extra warmth to dinosaurs that have them. Throughout most of the world during the Cretaceous, the climate is usually warm all year round, with only two seasons, dry and wet. But here in China, things are different. During the Cretaceous, the region itself was much closer to the North Pole than in modern times, and while there aren't any permanent ice caps, it develops a more seasonal and temperate climate. This forces the animals here to adapt to a changing and sometimes unpredictable environment. Some dinosaurs migrate to warmer lands in the south, but others, like this Bapiosaurus, stay here their entire lives. At around 2 meters long, Bapiosaurus is a small dinosaur and belongs to a strange family of theropods known as Therizinosaurs. This female is searching, strangely, for water. Unlike Eutyrannus, she is not a meat eater and therefore cannot get any moisture from the meat of prey. She therefore eats the snow. Every now and then she also looks for insects that have buried themselves deep into the earth to escape the cold. She is followed by a male Caudipteryx. He is even smaller than the Bapiosaurus, at around one meter long, but these dinosaurs are much faster. And for good reason. Sinocalyopteryx, a mid-sized theropod, big enough to threaten a Caudipteryx. In winter, it's vital for animals to retain good territories for food and shelter. Without them, survival is measured in days, not weeks or months. An adult male Eutyrannus has come to this area to secure such a territory.
but the current owner won't just hand over his turf without a fight. A month passes, and life in China has changed. It takes some time for most plants to awaken from hibernation, but for now, the temperature has risen several degrees, melting the ice and snow that once encapsulated this world. As usual, the female Bapiosaurus seeks for roots and grubs underground. With the snow mostly gone, she will have less difficulty digging for such food items. A Repinolimus, a large carnivorous mammal.
Normally this female wouldn't challenge the larger dinosaur, but close by are her pups, and to her, the Bapiosaurus is a threat. Several weeks pass, and after three months of winter, photosynthesis among the plants begins once more. Many of these plants are specialized in the seasonal climate, able to hibernate through the winter, waiting for spring's inevitable return. And with their reappearance comes the arrival of the southern migrants. This is the largest, Gingosaurus, a seven meter long relative of Iguanodon. Every autumn, these dinosaurs leave to warmer lands down south. But now that it is springtime, they migrate north to China to profit off the plant life. Herds of these dinosaurs spread throughout the forest, making them common targets for predators. In time, the descendants of these feathered tyrants will go on to hunt some of the most dangerous dinosaurs to ever exist. But until then, it's one large herbivore at a time. Spring brings more than just new arrivals.
For the male Corrupturix, it's a time to find a mate. In order to impress her, he must show his worth. Through dance, of course. Having taken in the performance, the female rejects him. In another part of the forest, a mother Satakasaurus and her baby forage. Like Jinjusaurus, Satakasaurus is a migrant species, but from a very different lineage. This animal is a ceratopsian, believe it or not, and an ancestor to the famous horned dinosaurs like Triceratops. She may seem defenseless without her descendants' horns and frills, but a mother Satakasaurus is no pushover, especially when it comes to defending her baby. They are being watched by the male Sinocalyopteryx, and on this hunt, he's brought company. The mother's beak could crush their necks in one bite. But someone else wants the baby too. Even in the Cretaceous, mammals like Repinomimus find ways to defy their dinosaur overlords. The weeks pass, and the forests become green with leaves, and lively with the calls of numerous animals. In the late afternoon, a small D-long prepares for a night of hunting. Another feathered tyrannosaur, D-long is much smaller than U Tyrannus and mainly hunts small mammals and reptiles rather than big dinosaurs. Something in the trees attracts a D-Long's eye. It's a dinosaur, 
but not the most conventional of species. This is Changyu Raptor, a feathered dinosaur that takes its coating to a whole new level. It can glide from tree to tree effortlessly thanks to its long leg and arm feathers, which allow it to soar for short distances without plummeting to the ground. Described in 2014, Changi Raptor is one of several feathered dinosaurs that proved once and for all that dinosaurs and birds are closely related. The history of flight and feathers with dinosaurs began with the finding of Archaeopteryx in Germany of 1860, one year after Charles Darwin published his book The Origin of Species, which discussed the validity of the theory of evolution. Believed to have been the first bird, Archaeopteryx was the first step in understanding the relationship between dinosaurs and birds. This physical reconstruction in the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, Illinois, represents what this creature may have looked like in real life. Its fingers were long and nimble to help grasp onto branches, and its head, which was scaly in life, held teeth rather than an actual beak. Both hints to a reptilian ancestry. Archaeopteryx lived during the Jurassic period around 150 million years ago. In the Cretaceous, birds like Cynornis from China were far closer in physical form to modern-day birds, but still retained reptile-like fingers and teeth in their jaws. For years, that's where the investigation was at, until 1964, with the discovery of Deinonychus, a dinosaur with features more like a bird than any other dinosaur discovered before it. Since then, the next 31 years were full of paleontologists trying to uncover the relationship between dinosaurs and birds. Then, in 1995, Sinoceropteryx was unearthed, with exquisitely preserved protofeathers on its body. Though it was a start, protofeathers aren't true feathers, and it was not until the discovery of a dinosaur called Sinornithosaurus in 1999 that both scientists and the public realized that birds and dinosaurs are far more closely related than we ever thought possible. Since this discovery, many more feathered dinosaurs became unearthed, making China the new bastion for important dinosaur discoveries. At 1.2 meters in length, Changi Raptor is a large species for its kin, which includes some of the smallest of all dinosaurs. Living in the trees keeps dinosaurs like this safe from the threats on the ground. D. Long, on the other hand, relies on speed to escape danger. The U. Tyrannus returns from his evening patrol. But tonight, his rule over the forest is now at risk. Defeated, this male must now lose the burden that he once gave to his rival last winter. That is, until he finds a new territory. For the dinosaurs of China, the spring growth will continue for another month or two. But eventually, the temperatures will drop, 
winter will set upon the land once more, continuing the cycle of life and death for all who endure it. The feathered dinosaurs of China remain one of the most important discoveries in the history of not just paleontology, but science in general. Their existence shows that dinosaurs weren't cold-blooded, scaly reptiles, but instead somewhat warm-blooded creatures, able to adapt to seasonal climates, not just tropical environments, and were able to, at least in several species, develop feathers for numerous purposes, be it to keep warm, attract mates, or travel. And dinosaurs like Changyuraptor not only hint at how flight developed, but also that not all dinosaurs are gone from this earth. For one group, the birds, remain to populate the world. But as Chang Yu Raptor glided through the forests of China, its relatives took a very different approach to life, becoming some of the most dangerous dinosaurs to ever walk the planet.